Excellent. So uh, my name is Brent Melton. Uh, you may know me from my roles in being leaders and reporter there. Um, and what we're going to talk about tonight um, is kind of ghost hunting, some experiences, stuff like that. Um, and so a couple things about me. One, I speak kind of quick, so if I'm going too fast, please tell me. So I want to be clear and make sure you guys understand. Um, second thing is this is about the second time I've presented to anyone on this stuff. I'm confident, but I got to figure it out. So that's, that's the main thing. So if you have any concerns with that, by all means, let me know. Um, we'll go through kind of a little about me, places I've been, equipment, and then kind of, you know, the stuff you see on TV that's kind of like, did they really catch that? You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, eh, we'll figure it out. So uh, let's get started. So first about me, who is this guy anyway? So I've been investigating just shy of two years. Um, I started with a first investigation with a group in Lima called the Ohio Ghost Crew. What they do is they go to places, they take, they investigate, they're, they're a paranormal group, and they have an investigation at the Lima Literacy Council. And they take the money and donate it back to the Literacy Council so they can kind of continue the mission. So I talk to my wife, she's like, it's like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, cool, you know about my wife. And so I went there and had this really interesting experience. Something I'm like, you see TV and you're like, oh, you see the ghost shows, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. But you see it like happening and you're like, that's a little weird. Um, so my first paranormal experience was in 1999. I was a, a Civil War reenactor. I was at Gettysburg for the 138 reenactment. I was wearing a Union coat, but I was hanging out with Confederates and went to a bridge called Sachs Bridge, which is pictures related to the thing. And so this bridge, I sit in the middle of it. Supposedly there are three Confederates that were hung there because they deserved the first day. Try to go back to you the third day. Not a good idea. Hung there, bodies lost. Good story. As I'm sitting on this bridge, kind of hanging out, relaxing, and on uh, Civil War hats, there's this leather strap. It's like to, it's kind of like a chin strap, but no one ever wears that way. But this thing flips from the front of my hat to the back. It's in the back of the head. I'm like, ooh, major goose will stand up. And this is 99, so a digital camera's kind of rare. But there was one there, and this group would come by. I'm like, excuse me, um, can you just take a picture right there? And they're like, what? I'm like, take a picture. Take a picture. We're standing there with this looking at it. There's a giant orb. I'm like, wow, that's really strange. This is like June, July. It's like summer months, hot. As we're sitting there, this cold mass of air just blows over us. And we're like, I'm like, do y'all feel that, right? And like, yeah. So that was my first one. So growing up, I was watching TV shows and like Terra X and all those kind of older school shows before like Ghost Hunters kind of came out. And so seeing a TV show versus experiencing it, totally different experience. Now you can be like, yeah, Ghost are real, right? Uh, I'm a historian, I'm a master's in history. So I enjoy history. That's just part of ghost hunting. You gotta understand you know, where you're at, what you're doing, what could have happened there, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, did you start a reporter? Talk about that. So I like talking to people. That's always awesome. Um, and a veteran. That is not really pertinent, if that makes sense, but I believe in serving something greater. Makes sense? Above myself. So that's why that's on there. Uh, go ahead. My, this is my philosophies, right? So I'm gonna read along because they're up there, but have an open mind. That's the biggest thing. Right? If you go in something closed minded, you never know. Right? You have to be willing to accept that things you don't understand could be happening or could not be happening. That's the other part. It's not all about belief. It's about, well, is it actually someone doing this or is it, you know, your floor is creaking? Those kinds of things. Two, not everything you see here feels paranormal. Air conditioning exists, cars exist, people walking exist. All these things that could be attributed to paranormal things. Could be mundane, right? That's the biggest one. Um, investigate locations, try to understand what is going on in the paranormal. Is it paranormal? Is it black mold that's causing you to hallucinate? Is it high EMF? Is it anything in the world besides paranormal that could be causing this? And if not, what's left, right? That goes back to Occam's razor, the simplest, most likely cause. If I, I'd rather have something be a creaky floor, a leaking toilet, pipes that rumble when you flush the toilet. Like, I look for what's wrong, what's more plausible. Tell me what's wrong. Okay, it could be this. You find, you know, something happening there. I want to disprove it. I don't want to be like, oh, everything's a ghost. That's not what I look at. Uh, be willing to be done, debunk yourself. As I was preparing for this, whew, let me tell you, 
Uh, as I was preparing for this, uh, I was going through some of our audio files trying to listen for EVPs. You go through, you listen, try to find them. And I'm like, I think this says something. So I get my wife, she's like, there's nothing there. It's like a breath. I'm like, it's something. Good my kid. My kid's like, I feel like a breath. My other kid, I hear your breath. I'm like, okay, fine. Be willing to be like, okay, it's a breath. Three out of four people saying it, eh, it's more likely. You have to be willing to be debunked yourself. Two, or last one there. If all non paranormal possibilities have been explored, what are we left with? It can still be mundane, it can still be a leak, it can still be something, but how do you explain someone getting touched? How do you explain feeling like you're walking through cobwebs when you're flapping your hands around and you can't find them, you're grabbing at it, you can't find things, right? How do you explain this? What is that? That's what I look at. Tools! The best tool resides behind your eyeballs. It's this thing right here. That is your absolute best tool. Because if you're not using that tool, well, everything's a ghost. Everything's paranormal. Everything is haunted. These creepy lights are not cars. It's manifesting light, right? So that's, that's your biggest tool. You have to think about what you're doing, and you have to look at the situation. And if, like, something goes bang every 30 seconds, Either that ghost has a rhythm, <coughs> off of rhythm, or it's a pipe, or it's, you know, whatever it happens to be. So that's, that's the biggest tool. So, and that is also, your brain also relates to your, um, your senses. What do you hear? What do you feel? Um, is it the air conditioner kicking off the breeze? Some people have the ability to feel things, like trust your intuition. Like, um, you walk in the room, and so I'm looking, be honest with you, I'm learning this about myself. Like, so when I go to a funeral home, that room, that room is heavy. It's 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 dense. It's sorrowful. It's just, you know, it's just you feel it. Not everyone can do that, and I didn't know that. I'm like, oh, it's like a funeral home. You know, that's not. Some people just feels like a room. So I'm learning that about myself as I kind of continue this path. Um, but then get into the other tools, right? So I, if you guys are familiar with ghost hunting, I'm sure some of you are. At least if not, you're hello. Be awesome. So you got your REM pod, right? So REM pod, you have the trip wire, you have cat balls, which is interesting. You have this is called an eddy, you have a voice recorder, an EMF detector, and a spirit box. There's more stuff, that's some of the more basic kind of foundational stuff. Um, so we'll go through them real quick here. So the REM pod, the way it works is this thing will zero itself out. And it'll sit in a location just like this, untouched, unmolested. Sit there for hours. Okay? So something gets close, and suddenly it's going off. And the closer it gets, the louder it gets, right? These things uh, measure the fluctuation from the EMF field, okay? The electromagnetic field. So if something gets close to it, the idea is that spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call them, can disrupt that field, make a change, that this thing goes, oh, hey, something's freaking, you know. Why is it even close to me? Um, the principle is kind of similar to the um, instrument, the theremin. You ever know what that is? So it's kind of a similar principle. It's like a wand. It kind of modulates sound. But this is kind of excellent. <coughs> um, the very basic stuff, this is kind of more advanced. Just out of your mouse. The basic stuff you guys need, besides your brain, if you want to go outside, you need two things. A good flashlight and a voice recorder. You can go ghost hunting with this. Go to a location, set your light up, make sure you can see, make sure you can have this. Because the most validating thing I've ever experienced in my life in this was, we'll talk about it here a little bit, here, a little bit later on, was going to a place, recording it, hearing nothing, doing evidence review, and hearing something, saying something. It is so validating that you can't explain what, who is this voice, why is this voice here, it's not me, it's Neil. It's just, it's a weird feeling to be like, ah, cool, I can do what the guys on TV do. But they're making, you know, a lot of stuff's like dramatic. We're just like out there trying to see what's going on, right? So a very basic flashlight uh, voice recorder. Um, from there, um, the ghost rope, or the, not ghost rope, the trip wire. The way the trip wire works, you can see this picture. So this picture is of this set up in Mansfield at the reformatory. Um, what it does is kind of similar to what the REM pod does. 
see how the colors are kind of purple? So if something um, messes with this field, right? It's close, touches it, shakes it, or just interacts with it, it will change colors, red, blue, green. So it measures again the change in the EMF field, right? And so <laughs> with these, I've seen them sit there for hours, or I'll say hours, but it feels like hours, long time, nothing changes, nothing happens at all. Sometimes they'll light up a specific light and say, oh, hey, did you touch that third light? Light lights up, third light. Sometimes we go from one to the other, <coughs> down to the other. So logically, well, if it's a single source coming from this way, why on earth is it going back? Like, so that's your uh, trip wire. Um, cameras. You need a camera system. GoPros are okay, but um, a system, I don't have one yet. Um, we're looking at getting one eventually. That's kind of our kind of hopes and dreams. Um, but yeah, it helps record stuff. Um, even though it's video, right, they still catch audio. So you may catch an EVP on both. You may catch it on one or the other or none. So kind of, you may hear a disembodied voice say XYZ thing. Nothing picks it up, but you definitely heard it. Um, you also have, um, so you have, see, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's fun to Eddie, but what Eddie does without his batteries, unfortunately, I do apologize, is he'll measure EMF, he'll measure vibration, he will measure, um, temperature changes, pressure changes. And on top of him, he's got a data logger. So, you set him up, you let him sit, he acclimatizes the room, and then if something's happening near him or they're kind of together, you can kind of see like, hey, it's gotten colder and this goes off. You can start to, part of the thing, scientifically, be like, X happened and X and Y happened. Are they correlated? Start to build those kind of data points, right? Um, the other kind of most famous one, you're, well, you're going to hear about um, was a spirit box. In early, like, when you're talking about ghost hunters, like early on, there'd be that thing of, Ch -ch 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 -ch, right? Cycles through, can't hear anything. From that, developed something called the Essie's method, okay? It's off of Essie's Park, Colorado. And what they do is they take a person, they plug a set of headphones into it that are noise canceling, and they put a blindfold on them so they can't see. And this person could be sitting in the back corner of the room, and we're up here, and they, they can't hear us, right? And we'll ask questions. Hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, were you from here? Where did you go to school? And this person is listening in total isolation. And all they're saying is words, yes, no, I don't know. Whatever it happens to be they hear, they'll say it out. Sometimes it's random words. Sometimes you say something, sometimes you get a response. And the way it works is it'll hop over um, either AM or FM radio frequencies at a clip, like ch -ch -ch -ch. So the idea is that if you hear a, a long sentence, how would six or seven radio stations be able to put a set of words together randomly, especially on AM, while well, there's a lot of dead space, there's not a lot of AM stations anymore. Um, had some interesting stuff with that too kind of happen. Um, the other thing you've got, one of the basic ones as well, is the EMF detector. So this, oh, sorry. So the uh, EMF detector, like this is probably the most common you're gonna see if you're looking online for them. They're kind of basic, which is fine, they do their job. You see people waving around like this, you know, you gotta, they're kind of, think of it like a flashlight phone, like you don't wanna, you know, kind of put it in the ground, right? So it holds on, it'll tell you um, it's a baseline, right? So if you're gonna go, if you go through a building, you walk in a building, you walk around, okay, it's zero here, it's zero here. Oh, this room is like 700, oh, that's kind of high, right? So you know, or it's zero. <coughs> the idea being you get a baseline in the building, and then as you are investigating, <coughs> if this thing suddenly goes up to like 20 or 30 or whatever, you're like, what's, what's going on? Why is this doing this? You kind of build that basis of what's changed, why is it changing, right? Um, this is a fun one too. Um, uh, Lori Annie owns a crystal creation shop, our celestial crystal creations in um, Salina, her current shop. And uh, this thing is a lot of fun there because there's this little ball that sits about this high and the lights are turned off. And it's just right here and there in space. And it doesn't move, and you turn the light back on, it's gone. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't understand it. I don't know why, but to me, because it's so frequent, it's a regular, it's probably some weirdness in the shop or how things are going. 
That's one of the things about wanting to be defunct. Like, if it's that regular, well, stuff like that. Um, so the other stuff they have here is this is a laser grid. And what happens with this, I want to blind you guys, of course, is it sets up and you will aim this, say, down a hallway, or you'll aim it in a room, or a, whatever you want to aim at in a doorway. The idea being, these things will sit here stable and not moving for until you move it, right? This one sit there. The idea being that you can see things or shadows or whatever you want to call it moving, disrupting the beams. Because if it sits here for an hour like this and suddenly the beams move, why? Why is that happening? Like, that's one of the tools on the other ones. Um, let's see here. Cat, cat balls. Okay. So these are these are so if you decide you want to get into ghost hunting, these are these are literally cat balls. They'll be they'll be branded as whatever they are, right? Um, they'll say cat toys, they'll say ghost toys, whatever. It's a it's a literal cat ball. So what these work is they go on. When they move, a switch inside it goes off, right? Kind of connects or makes it go off. It just whatever. And so I figured out that with these things, sometimes you get interacted with, and you'll be sitting there, and this thing will just be sitting there for 20 minutes, and suddenly it's just lighting up the room, and you're like, the, be the better ones is when you're sitting there, and you're talking, and you're like, hey, can you light this cat ball up? The thing's been sitting there 20 minutes dead, not moving, suddenly the thing lights up, and then shuts off. Like, hey, that was great, you can do it again, and it lights up again. Not like 10 seconds, 15 seconds interval, but just, it lights up. So, that's pretty much the basic tools. Like the most basic, again, flashlight, voice recorder, um, all the way up to tripwire, laser lights, and of course, the other stuff too. You have um, those camera systems. Um, I'm blanking on it, but it basically it takes a Xbox Kinect camera, projects a bunch of like infrared lights, and it maps things. And on those, it's called Kinect, Kinect camera. So those are designed to look for human patterns for people playing Xbox games. So suddenly a pattern appears, looks like a human, but you don't see anything. So there's kind of some ideas that it could be a ghost, it could be a spirit, it could be the camera searching the matrix in a human because that's what it's you know, programmed to do, right? So that's your basic stuff. Next one. Okay, so locations. Where have I been so far? So this is Saks Bridge up here, guys. This is the bridge in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want to go there on your trip to Gettysburg, it is just outside of town on the south side, um, behind the Confederate lines, about a mile, mile and a half. Um, it's a historic covered bridge, obviously. Um, had some other stuff there too, happened when I, in 1999. As I walked across this bridge the first time before I sat down, uh, down this, there's a road that goes this way and out, kind of curves, right? And we have, with me is my buddy Finster and Private Mike, who is a woman, but she's playing Confederate soldier. We got in this, walk out in this field, or walk in there, and she kind of like does this. We're like, okay, whatever. And then like, kind of get a little further, and she's like, like looking around, like, what are you doing, Mike? And then finally, she like just kind of turns around, like kind of just like fastly walks back up the other side of the bridge. We're like, all right, whatever. Go back. I have my experience. You go back to camp. I'm like, ah, oh, that's really wild. Hit me in the, you know, whatever. She goes, when we're in that field, uh, something, someone's pulling my buttons. I said, well, oh, that's kind of wild. She's like, well, I've got original Confederate buttons in my jacket. That's why. So she's looking for brambles. She's looking for bushes. But this is a, this is a field that looks, I mean, just, just a field. Like, there's nothing nothing there. So, ah, that's pretty cool. Um, we're going to talk a lot about Randolph and, uh, County Infirmary later on with the uh, evidence. Great place. Best place I've ever been. It's over by Winchester. Um, it used to be a poorhouse um, and like farmhand stuff like that, and then an infirmary, insane asylum. Um, just an altogether interesting place. A lot of history. It's um, they run it out. They have public hunts there as well. Um, but a lot of interesting stuff up here. This is Lawn Literacy Council from the top. So that one uh, was an affluent uh, Lima family. Um, and they, of course, have passed since, you know, since, you know, since then. Um, like the 19, gosh, she, the last one passed away in 48, 
or not, it's more in there, I have to remember. But upstairs, um, when you walk upstairs, there's like two bedrooms and then there's um, a couple hallways and stuff. And the first time, I've been there twice now. First time in one room to the right, felt like someone was in that room. Like, like, you ever get that, you guys don't get this, maybe it's just me again. You ever get that feeling you walk in a room and you feel like, oh, I, man, this is someone's room, I shouldn't be here. You guys ever get that? Yeah, what it felt like in that room, it slowly dissipated. Um, first time there, very first ghost night, we had a, they had a trip wire set up down this one hallway, and this thing would like light up from one end and go back to the other. We had REM pods going off, and then um, one time there was a, uh, I went from one to the other, and as it passed, there was like this cold breeze going with it. It's super, it's like, that's, it's weird. Um, um, that place also had um, the second time I was there, which was in um, I think March of this past year, uh, was we were all downstairs. We're kind of, um, well, actually, correction. So there's a kitchen, directly like, well, this is this office, it's, you know, uh, supposedly haunted too up there. And <coughs> in other rooms upstairs, there's two people, or two other groups, like so maybe three or four people in each. And they're sitting there watching this video, video monitor. We hear someone stomping. Like stomp, stomp, stomp. Like we're like, look at the camera, we can see in the room, there's no one there. So we call them like, hey, go in this room. Go in there, no one. We're watching, because no one can go in, no one go out. How do you explain stomping? It's, it's just, it's one of those weird things. Um, this is Franklin Castle, this is in Cleveland. Um, this is the Tiedemann's um, this, uh, home. They were a you know, powerful and rich uh, family in Cleveland. This castle just opened up in like December, January of last year for people to go through. It's got a ton of stairs. Um, there's a basement, second floor, third floor. And it was interesting. I saw some stuff I can't explain there either. So we can talk about, talk about that a little bit too. Um, next one is, of course, Mansfield. Um, that's, I think that's a what, east sublock, west sublock? But uh, Mansfield is interesting. If you're going to a public hunt, you might have a good time or you might have a bunch of people just yapping and talking and freaking out, like having a good old time, ghost hunting. Yeah. Private event, so much better. Um, would recommend that. The cost is, should be about the same as long as you got a big enough group. Um, that one, the next one, this is the Ogways Village up in Van Wert. Um, they got a lot of historic buildings up there. And it's got, uh, they, so they moved a bunch of them up there. It's been a new village, they got a school, a church, um, a couple log cabins, homes, stuff like that. That one was probably, I'd say, second on the list. Some really crazy stuff happened there. Um, we'll talk about that more if you want to. Um, the other place up here, uh, this is the Bell Mansion in Fort Wayne. Um, they returned this place, it was a funeral home for 90 years. Um, so when I walk in, it's like an oppressive kind of funeral home, you know, very somber kind of feel to it. Um, then you go upstairs, it's totally fine. It feels different. Um, uh, the, they have offer public tours, stuff like that as well. You can book it overnight. They're trying to turn it into an event space, so it's kind of struggling with its identity right now. So um, definitely an interesting place I'd go back to. So that's where I've been so far. I think there's a few other places too, but that's that's the main ones. Go ahead. Okay, let's hunt together. Ha ha! Didn't expect that, did you? Right. So here's what we do. Uh, Light over here, it's okay? Yeah. Sure. If you want to put your camera, I apologize. Oh, the back wall. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Okay. Welcome to Ghost Hunting 101. So where we are? I forgot to tell you what place. This is this is the Lionel RTA bus garage. This bus garage is built over a cemetery, and they could not get everyone out. They also moved bodies without putting names with them. Massive problems. Go ahead. All right. Well, I took this picture. I'm sitting there, this is like my second or third ghost hunt. This is the Ohio ghost crew I'm with. I'm sitting there, I took this picture, I'm like, oh, cool, great. I scroll in, I go, got a ghost right here with it. No, it's a woman. It's one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the uh, uh, hosts, right? That's who she is. Um, so count with, me, count with me people on this, ready? We're gonna count, ready? So one, two, Three, four, five, there's six, seven, eight. Does everyone agree? 
More or less eight? No. Okay, eight people. Next one. Okay. The shot. She has moved from here. This light is actually a reflection off that one, which would be a while to figure out, let me tell you. I'm like, oh, it's a ghost light. No, it's just the reflection. I'm an idiot. This picture. The gentleman was here. If you go, can you hit the backspace real quick? So this gentleman here, I think is her husband. Go ahead and hit the forward space. He has moved over here. So we're down to this person over here. One, two, well, maybe there's one more in the first picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, and he's behind her, seven. So we've lost someone, which is her, the eighth person, right? Okay, next picture. Okay, right? Sam out, so that person, one, two, three, four, five, six, and he's now behind her, correct? Everyone agree, seven, because she's moved out of the picture? Well, <coughs> six. Well, it should be nine, but now we're down to six. Okay, so can you hit the backspace? Okay, so this picture and the next picture were taken about a minute after the first picture. So right here, okay, we see this reflection, right? Go forward one, you see this picture here, right? Forward reflection, go back to, okay. This guy, he's not there. He's not there. If you look at it, you see a head, his eyes, and actually it's really showing up really good on this thing, I like it. Um, his legs, and you can see his feet, there's like white soles. This guy was not part of our group. He's not in the pictures, he is not there. But in this picture, he was. You go, uh, go backward again. Oh, okay. And then, um, can you go back one more? And the weird thing is, this reflection is straight. It's a straight reflection. There's not, it's in two pictures separately. What it is, the straightness is off of this bus. This bus is reflecting here. It's just the way it is. Either way, even if it's not that bus, it's still a straight line, right? Go forward one. Same thing here, same reflection, it's straight. Her husband's now behind her with his white shoes yet over here. Then go ahead and go forward one more. This is, yep, yeah. go forward, yep, you're right. And so this is a blown up shot. So. This guy standing here, his pants, his shoes, his face, you can't see the bus wheel behind him, you can't, yeah. And so, as I'm sitting there, it's my like second ghost on this crew, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell was that? Actually, I spot the white lady in the first one, what the hell was that? I'm like, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, can you, can you look at this? And she's like, she's like, look at it, and she goes, oh, I need to. Right, and so think what you will, but I, I I can't explain that guy. He's not. I I you have to believe me. We took group pictures. There's no one wearing kind of old fashioned like looks like chucks almost with white soles. And I don't see it personally, but the group I was with, they said, "Well, it looks kind of like he's kind of damaged or injured. Maybe his face is kind of sliced or something." I'm like, I don't know. I see an I see an eye socket. I see a cheek. I see part of a head. But yeah, he, he was not he was not there. So uh, let me get the lights back on real quick here. Oh yeah, no. So this also more or less what it looks like purple lights wait for something to flash. This thing is you're sitting there <laughs> talking. Wise, right? So what else do I have? This is the best thing I've ever caught, and I've never caught anything else. So it's gonna spoil me for the rest of my career doing this stuff. So I have no I think I think at the end of it. Okay, evidence. So <coughs> go ahead and close this out here. Ouch, I'll do that. Yeah. So oops, not what I wanted. Please excuse my messy desktop, guys. So, what should play? Can you play like, can you play the first movie real quick? We'll kind of go down. Okay, is that mine or 
is that the speaker? Yeah. Oh, I'll mute you. Oh, um, I think so. <laughs> Sorry. I can fix it. Start with the, uh, the top one there. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's not a fun one, right? Woo! Right? So this is, <laughs> this is the Randolph County Asylum. It's me and my wife in this, uh, it's called the uh, workshop, right? It's just us there. There's no one in this room. There are people upstairs and kind of other areas, but it's not near us. But, um, yeah. Really, really random voice. Mm -hmm. The next one, <coughs> okay. Let's see. What? Now, this one is weird. These are drafts? So, this is in the same, this is in the same room. This is like 28 minutes into recording. And, mm -hmm. and you hear, okay, so the second voice there, that's my wife's voice. I don't know. You play it again? I guess you put it on dry. What? I guess you put it on dry. Or whatever it said. It's a very breathy. Can I hear it? Drafts? But it's not my wife. And clearly I'm talking to her, but she's like, what? Okay. So that's, that's another one. Uh, you play the next one? Not very visually exciting. I do apologize. Yep. We need new drive on the same. Okay, yeah, this one is weird one's not really, this could be, this is a good investigation thing here. It could be something. Go ahead and play it again, please. We need new drive on the same. Okay. So what's going on is we're sitting, we are sitting uh, in this tour room we just got in there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going kind of blind. I don't want to show you like what it says on the, in the file to know what I know it says. Uh, I don't want to, because if you, that's another part of thing. So if you read it or I say something to you, you like, it influences what you hear, right? So we're in this room and we're setting up and she's complaining about the tripod, right? And then you'll hear something that's not my wife and it's not me. And it's, if you guys want to know where it's at, it's, I think it's like right in this area. It's like right, right here. You'll <coughs> hear something. We need new tripod on this thing. You hear that? Yeah, it's pretty but blatant. It's like, yeah. I, I don't, I, what do you guys think it says? I'm so sorry. Could be, yeah. I, I hear that. I, I hear, my, now my ears aren't good. I hear like, so so. So so. As in, maybe the tripod's good or bad. She's like, yeah, so so. Next one. So 
I say hello to, like, I say hello to the room or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the context, but I say hello. Go play the game. And then. Oh. Now there's a possibility for that one that it could be, that could be another group of, like, the shoe floors. We're in the basement. <coughs> I'm up there echoing through and saying hello. Because it's, it's not the same kind of tonality of the other ones. It's kind of like breathy. That's more like a hello, kind of. So that's one of those things you gotta go, could it be or could it be? So, yeah, next one. Expect you in your space. So, that first one, woo! Same voice, right? This is us in the same room. We're talking about, um, we want to talk about, hey, we're in your space, we know we're here. Does it, hopefully it doesn't bother you. We're trying to respect your space. And you get the, that random. Respect you and your space. And that's loud. It's not, and, and we, don't, we don't acknowledge and go, oh, who the hell was that? We're, we don't acknowledge it. So, uh, yeah, next one, please. Now this one, I know what this one is. This one's a fun one. What? Would you like a flashlight? I'm just seeing what else we got. Oh. Jeez. I think it says, you hear, did you hear it first off? Yeah. Okay, play it again, please. What? Would you like a flashlight? I'm just seeing what else we got. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we'll play it again. I'll give you some context. We're walking around in this room. We're still, this is another kind of earlier, like, so they're, they're out of sequence, unfortunately. I do apologize, but we're still getting set up. I'm digging through the bag, or she's digging through the bag, looking for the flashlight that I have, and I go, do you want this flashlight? And she goes, that's not what I'm looking for. Play again, please. What? Would you like a flashlight? I'm just seeing what else we got. Oh. Yeah. Liar. Liar. Because she's bullshitting me. <laughs> she goes, it goes, liar. <laughs> like, right? And, that, and now that, that, this is the most validating one. This is the first one I ever heard where I'm like, Oh, that was the one from Randolph County. But yeah, you hear it saying liar. And it's just, it's clear as day. We don't acknowledge it. It's not us. It's not like rustling. It's not, it's liar. Yeah, play the next one, please. Got that. Let's go. Is that it? Captain Capitals? Catch. So this is downstairs at the. Uh, Randolph County, well. this is in the, it's called Doris's Kitchen. Doris got dropped off when she was like four. She wasn't handicapped. They just dropped her off. It's like an orphanage kind of situation. Stayed there until she died, 80 years. This is her kitchen. We walk in, we're set up. It's just us, no one else here. Got that. Who else do you? Is that it? Captain Capitals? Now, if you have your headphones on, it sounds a little different here, but if you. On here, it kind of sounds like a moan, like a whoa. If you had headphones on, it's hello. It's 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 no one. We don't acknowledge it. So when I heard it, I'm like, asked my wife and I said, hey, um, did someone walk by about a minute and a half in when we were down there? And she goes, no, it was like ten minutes later. So, um, and the last one. So this one, this one was caught at uh, Lori's shop. And this is gonna ask me a little rough. So me and Lori are in a shop, she had investigated real quick. And we, so in her shop, like, there's a door about right there. We are through that door talking. And the re recorder is about right here, roughly. So we're talking. And then we come back and you get this. Play it, please. That, that one's tough. It's real quiet, but it's not us talking. We're like, should include more of the clip, but you can hear us kind of like, we're like, oh, no, you hear us. And basically, play one more time. I don't know if you guys can hear or not, but one more time. And what it says, we're talking about it. What it says, if you had headphones on, it says, we should go back there. And it's just, it's a full sentence. It's creepy. So, um, <clears throat> that's the evidence I have. That's the presentation, more or less. Um, yeah, questions, concerns. You want to come touch us up? Like, what do you, what do you guys want to do? It's up to you guys. I want to hear everybody else's ghost stories. Yeah, absolutely. 
because I got some that you wouldn't sleep at night. Heck yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the biggest thing about this is I, the, the coolest thing is getting to talk to people about the stories and stuff they see and experience that you just, you're like, oh, man, that's crazy. So like that, because you just, you like, you know, as far as like, uh, as far as the Franklin Castle in Cleveland, um, that was a super valid anyone for me. Um, going, I was going down the stairs uh, through the basement where the kind of headquarters was, and I see like an arm, like this much of an arm, like reaching for something in this room. I'm like, I stop, I look at my glass, I'm like, is there, is there, is there a reflection? You know, I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, I can't prove it. And then later on the night, me and another investigator in the same room, um, we were getting ready to go from the top floor down. So we're on the second floor, which place is that. And we're like, hey, let's go to this room real quick. He's like, yeah, sure. So we're like this big table. And earlier in the night, we had like uh, um, the ghost uh, tripwire set up here. And it was kept going off. And so we're like doing something. I don't know what the hell we're doing. But we're like looking around. I got my flash. I walk up to it and I flash. Just, it's not there. And I flash the light on. And he's looking at me. And this white egg-shaped thing with purpose just goes straight across. Self-illuminating. Not like it was bright on my light. I'm like, oh. and he goes, did you see that? I said, yeah. So we're like, I'm like frantically flashing my light. I'm trying to find this bug, excuse me, this bug, this whatever it happens to be. And I'm like, didn't see it. Not, there's nothing there. Nothing, nothing fell from the ceiling. There's nothing on the floor. It's one of those weird things. Um, hearing hearing um, a disembodied voice was a kind of cool thing, but then creepy. Um, Bell Mansion. Uh, we were upstairs in the, um, there's like a poker table set up there, and they're giving a talk and said, hey, our guests sometimes they'll play poker up here, but you have to leave one chair open, because they like to sit there and play with you. And it's like, oh, cool. And as he says this, you know, so the guy's talking here, poker table's over there, I hear something go, yeah, that's right. And I'm just like, <laughs> I look over, I'm like, but you don't, you don't trust yourself. You go, I didn't hear that, I made that up. Ah, but you have to trust that, that yeah, you did hear something, right? Um, gosh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's those experiences you can't explain. Like being in Mansfield, and we're down at the, let's see, be the west cell block under the floor, under the basement area, and we're in this room that's secluded. Like, you can't get there, there's no airflow. As we're sitting there, like just this cold breeze just kind of blows in. There's no, there's no windows. There's no like strong breeze outside. It's just one of those experiences. Like, how do, you, how do you quantify that? How do you, how do you, how do you record that? How do you go? Well, it happened, but then pr you'll prove it, right? So, um, yeah. For my end, that's what it's been about so far. But anyone else? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one about. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I've been ghost hunting uh, uh, for the last four years because nice. I'm in. The thought that people, places, or things can be conduits to the spirit world. Sure. Everybody's seen Insidious, where uh, what was the name of the doll, Annabelle? Yeah. You know, and the Warrens, and how good they were and stuff. Well, I was uh, ghost hunting near the Moonville Tunnel. Yeah, okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah, I didn't see anything there. So you. <laughs> that's the other that, thing. Uh, a lot of times you'll be talking to yourself for hours and have nothing besides yourself talking to yourself on the voice recorders. Yeah. So. But I met another group of uh, ghost hunters there, and uh, we were talking. And the one guy was real animated and excited. Got to tell you what happened to us. And the other two guys, there's three of them, says, "No, don't tell him." I said, "No, I want to hear. You know, if it's this exciting, tell me." He says, "Well, we just got back from Gettysburg, and we had spent the night." going around the battlefield and everything. And uh, in the morning, we went, uh, when it got to be dusk, we went to the Confederate Cemetery in Gettysburg, Colt. And uh, he says, we're looking at the dates and when this guy died and everything, because they're also history buffs. Sure. And his friend yells at him, you gotta come over and take a look at this. So everybody walked over there and there's a tombstone from 1863 you know, and it's got his name on it. It's got his name, the date of his birth, which is correct, and the date that he died on it. And he says, no, nah, no, nah, nah, somebody's pranking me. This is terrible. But nobody knew when they were going to be there. Plus, 
a tombstone is that old. So they look at the next tombstone to it, and it had his wife's name on it, was her birth date and her wow. day of, uh, date of death. And the next tombstone had his daughter's name on it with the date of birth and the date of death. He said, so they went ahead and they took all pictures of this. Nobody's going to believe us. This is just, you know, uh, they'll say it's bullshit, you know, yeah. basically, you know. <laughs> and so uh, they got real excited and they went back to their motel that night, you know, and they said, well, we got to bring that up and make copies of this because nobody's going to believe this, you know. They brought it up and there was nothing on the film. Oh, and not only is there not pictures anymore of it, but nobody can remember the day of death on any of the three people. Oh, wow. So yeah. the next morning, they didn't get any sleep that night, of course. <laughs> so they uh, yes. went back out there, and where the, those three tombstones were, there's nothing, just brass. Interesting, yeah. yeah. That's super cool. Want to hear a story about the devil? Everyone? Yep. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, I've had people who even call out my name or you know, spirits before, and I was even attacked once. And that's, that's not really that's, scary. But that's not fun, yeah. No, no. I, <laughs> I didn't think they were ever going to let go of me. But uh, I got a friend of mine, not a real good friend, but he lives in New Knoxville, and this probably happened. 12 years ago or something, but he worked in forward third shift. And uh, he hated having to go out to 33 and down to 75 and up. So he and his buddy who worked in forward and also worked and uh, lived in New Knoxville, they drive together, you know, and uh, th this buddy of mine, it, his home life was just absolutely terrible. His, uh, he has, 17 year old son that was addicted to drugs and stealing and doing all sorts of stuff. He had just found out that his 15 year old daughter was pregnant, you know, and his wife was bipolar and refused to take her medication. Sure. So she was bouncing off the walls at all times, you know, and uh, he just didn't know what to do, which way to turn, nothing. He was just besides himself, you know, with despair and everything. Well, his buddy, this was in uh, December, the first of December, so it gets dark early then. He worked third shift, so it's about 10 o'clock and he's heading to Lima. His buddy's on vacation, you know, and uh, he's driving up there and out in the country a lot of times and everybody's passed by him. There'll be like a family cemetery, you know, yeah. from, mm -hmm early 1900s, late 1800s or something, you know, they might only have 12 gravestones in them or whatever. And he's getting close to this and his car starts to stutter. You know, he says, now nah, come on, come on, we can make it, we can make it. You know, in the morning I, I can do something for you. Well, he gets level with the cemetery and the car stops, the lights go off and everything. And he is so besides himself, he starts pounding on the uh, steering wheel. Why me? What, what can I do? What am, what's happening to me? This is terrible. And he puts his head down on the steering wheel on his arms. And he starts smelling something burning. You know, and he thinks, oh, God, is this thing going to catch fire now or whatever? And he looks over in the passenger seat where his buddy always sits but he isn't there because he's on vacation. And there's a little old man sitting there. He says he's got on brown high shoes, a old gray pair of pants and a really roughly light tan jacket. And he's wearing a fedora hat and he's looking at him, but he has no eyes. It's just burnt oh, wow. all around here. And he says, I was, Scared out of my mind, which hell it would be for me too, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, he said, the guy sitting in the chair looks at him in a very calm voice, says, anything you want. And he's 
going berserk inside because he knows this guy, you know, if it really is who he thinks it is, you know, can take care of all of his wolves at least momentarily. Sure. You know? And uh, Charlie turned back around to his steering wheel and he's shaking and holding on to the steering wheel and managed to say no. He turns around and looks and the guy's gone. Wow. Charlie starts up the ignition, or turns the ignition key, starts right up. You know, and he goes back home. And I'm not gonna go there by myself anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, but uh, he never talks about this kind of stuff, so I believe him 110%. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, anyone have any questions? Anyone have any concerns? Anyone, any other things you wanna know about, maybe? What about this ghost in the library? It lives in the copy room. I've heard the heard a few things about it. If you ever want to investigate, you just let me know. I have a key. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Has so, it always been haunted, or is it just recently? Or so the story is back in the 1800s. There's a couple things. Uh, the person there used to be a house here, and um, so it could be. Um, one of the owners of the house that passed away from the 1800s or it could be a priest that traveled here and uh, then he died here and was buried here and they don't know who um, uh, where he came from he was just here visiting in the 1800s I'm not sure exactly 1850s or something and um, he passed away and the, the people that lived here didn't have anyone to contact for him and they didn't know who any of his relatives were or anything. He just wanted a traveling priest. So they're they're not sure, but yeah. So this used to be uh, someone's house and um, anyone could come do some research in the local history if they want to do learn more. I don't know all the details of it, um, but uh, that's what I heard when I first started. And uh, yeah, sometimes the light flickers and you can't explain why. Um, there's nothing wrong only one light turns off and the, and the way it's set up here like there's multiple lights on a switch when you turn one of the switches on here not just one and and there'll be nothing wrong with the light bulb uh, one of our co-workers came in here to work like on the day we were all off and she said that that light in the copy room was on just by itself <coughs> So I know I, I've heard that. I know when uh, I talked to Troy Anderson about when he was here, he said that uh, they were kind of doing doing this. He said that he's like, "Hey, let's go investigate," and they did. And then uh, at some point, they said they had like a camera set up. They said it's like also like the third or fourth book rack back there in the corner. And they said they had a like they either saw or they found that a book had been like not just like placed, but like pushed out of the rack. It was on the ground. They're like that wasn't there, you know that about this place um, there's a few other things here and there but mostly that story um, I heard about the copper yet, so that's kind of cool to know so maybe someday we'll get an investigation organized we'll kind of come out here and investigate when the library's closed and see, you know, see what's going on so but um, yeah if you guys have any questions by all means please ask if you guys want to come see how this stuff works you know feel free as well so but thank you anybody